If he who breaks the law is not punished, then he who obeys it is cheated. Welcome to Rising Crime. I came across a story about this father in Baltimore that really hammered home the idea that we are actually creating criminals with our no bail, dropping charges, DAs that don't prosecute anything anymore. So this is Santiago. He is the father of a 14-year-old boy in Baltimore, Maryland, who has had 19 charges filed against him. All but one of the charges were dropped, and the one that did stand only resulted in probation. He said his son started stealing cigarettes from cars, then started stealing cars, and then he's running from police, and has been arrested multiple times in carjackings and crime sprees from Baltimore to Washington, D.C. In spite of his rash of crimes, his son has never faced any real consequences for his actions. After his son's last arrest, Santiago pleaded with the county to leave his son in custody, and they told him that he had six hours to come get his son, or they will come after him for neglect and abandonment of the child. Again, his son is only 14. Santiago wants his son to get help, and thought a short time behind bars might help, but the system is not set up that way. If you pay attention to crime in America, you know that it is largely committed by one group of people, and the ages of criminals continue to get younger and younger. So we have to ask ourselves, are we creating these criminals? With the way our justice system is set up, that people are arrested and released, and there's no consequences, no punishment, and anyone who's ever raised a child knows or anyone that's had a dog, or anyone that's had to raise anything, knows that if you don't stop bad behavior right away, it gets worse. And as it gets worse, it gets harder to stop. So you go back to like the broken windows policing that they used back in the 90s when things got really bad. Where you start arresting people for very minor crimes. And when you do that, when you start arresting people for the small stuff, it eliminates the escalation to the larger stuff, for the most part. So this kid, this 14-year-old kid, he has a dad in his life. There was no mention of a mom or a family or anything, but he has a father. So assuming he has a father and a family, he's got a support system. If this child would have had consequences the first time he got busted stealing cigarettes out of somebody's car, with the support of his father, he likely may not have continued down this path. But there were no consequences. He started stealing cars. There were no consequences. He's been arrested 19 times at the age of 14 and has faced no consequences. This kid is not going to stop, and this father knows this. The father doesn't want his son to be killed, which is the only future this father is seeing for his son, is that he's going to end up dead. And he asks the police to keep his son in jail for him, just so the son can face some consequences. And the system said, we're going to come after you if you leave him here. Now, I don't know who that's helping. I'm sure there's some law that says that, you know, that is considered child neglect. If you abandon your child, if they want to go after him that way. But what, what is this father actually supposed to do? Our system is allowing and making his son a criminal. And there's nothing he can do about it because the system is fighting against him. And this is, this is playing out in families all across the country. I mean, people will go on and on about how you need a father in your life or you will commit crimes. And I agree with that. I agree having a father for these young men is very important. But here's a situation where you have the father there who sounds like he's actively in his son's life and he wants his son to be a good person, and even more than that, he wants his son to just be alive. 
because he knows the path his son is on is going to eventually kill him. So he's doing everything he can just to keep his son alive and the system is working against him. Because we, as a society, with the way our laws are set up, are making it easier and easier for criminals to be criminals. For making petty thieves to become full-fledged criminals. I saw at one point that the number of people in prison for longer than like 10 years, the majority of them were there for murder, which makes sense because murders would carry probably the longest sentence, more so than a lot of other crimes would. But I think part of the reason that that that, that is is because if you're not putting anyone in jail for these small offenses and the criminal keep es keeps escalating and escalating and escalating, eventually he's going to get to that level of murder. And if the murderers are mainly the only ones you're keeping in jail, then that would make sense that the majority of the people with the longer sentences would be in for murder. So our system is set up to work against itself. And the story of this father is a prime example of how nothing is going to get any better in our country until we stop these DAs from not prosecuting, till we get new DAs in that will actually prosecute crimes, until we start going back to that broken windows where we're punishing people for the small crimes to prevent them from getting to larger crimes. Without that happening, this revolving door is going to continue and continue. The criminals are going to keep getting younger and younger, and there's nothing that anyone's going to be able to do about it.